Welcome back to the Prepare Like a Pro live chat Sunday show. My name is Jack McLean. I am the host, and today we have a massive episode announcing our top 10 most listened episodes for 2021. I will be providing 10 key questions for the Footballers Listening Podcast to ask yourself if you want to get fitter, faster, and stronger for the 2022 season. And of course, like I do every week, announce the upcoming live chats that we have on the YouTube channel and the episodes to be released on the podcast. We release those episodes Tuesday. We have a Get Better Plan educational episode on Wednesday. And we have another interview for the podcast that releases on Friday. So we'll get straight into the top 10 episodes for 2021. And starting out at number 10, we have Anthony Kudafidis, the AFL champion. Then at number nine, we have Jay Ellis, a strength and conditioning coach at Melbourne United. Number eight, we have Jordan Stairs, another strength and conditioning coach for the West Coast Eagles. Number seven, Andrew Russell, also known as Jack, the Carlton High Performance Manager. Jordan Seller, the High Performance Manager of the AFLW Women's Team for the Adelaide Crows. Lee Meehan, the Sports Dietitian at the Collingwood Football Club. Gatano Ferranda, another strength and conditioning coach who at the time was the High Performance Manager at Williamstown. He's now teaching at Victoria University. And our top three, big drum roll, we have at number Number three, Sam Ski, who's a medium forward for the Fremantle Football Club. Number two, Selworth Griffith, who at the time was the head strength and conditioning coach for the Premiers, the Melbourne Football Club. He has now taken over the reins and he is the high performance manager. And number one, Darren Burgess, who at the time was the high performance manager of the Premiers, the Melbourne Football Club, has now moved over to Adelaide Football Club, where he's the high performance manager. So Thank you to all our guests that started on the episode and it was great to see our first year underway. There's been a massive amount of growth um, where we've pretty much getting 10, 10 times the amount of listens that we did when we started one and it's great to see uh, not only strength and conditioning coaches listening in but we're getting AFL players that are ranking highly, we're getting dietitians, nice blend which was just something that we're passionate about and something that... I know I love to learn off and have a bit of a holistic approach where we're getting a wide, wide spread of fishers and experts in their field, whether they're coming from a player's perspective, uh, we're coming from the mental health psychology perspective, nutrition and recovery, uh, or from a strength and conditioning point of view. So um, we'll continue to uh, to ensure that we, we keep having guests from all those different areas, um, but clearly strength and conditioning coaches seem to be um a seem to be ranking quite highly so i can imagine there's a lot of coaches tuning into this podcast um, so we'll make sure that we continue to uh, reach out to many SCs for 2022 but of course the footballers and athletes are listening in as well um but we're getting in those athletes and continually getting in the different different widespread it's not all just strength and conditioning we'll make sure we keep in plenty of variation if you have any recommendations for guests that you think would um, present well on our podcast, uh, you can make a recommendation and send that through to me on any of our socials via direct message or email it through at jack at preparelikeapro.com. But I just wanted to take this in to thank all our guests for taking out the time every day to come on the podcast and share your expertise and your knowledge and, more importantly, um, how you go about your challenges throughout your career. Uh, obviously it's not all linear once you've had a long career and um, I think we can learn a lot of who've got experience uh, in the game and, and how they navigate through the challenges but also success leaves clues so learning off what, what works well from, from a practitioner point of view. Okay we're going to the upcoming guests now for this week. We've got a live episode Monday night so for those listening in the podcast world you're probably listening on a Monday so tonight uh, and those listening live will be tomorrow night. So 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, I'll be interviewing Nicholas Rawl, who is our Corfu Grammarians Men's Strength and Conditioning Coach. He's an intern for Prepare Like a Pro, where basically I design the, the strength and the conditioning program, and he individualises it for rehabilitation purposes or performance purposes for the athletes, as well as integrates that with the skills program. 
Um, so he, he runs the sessions, facilitates the, the program for the athletes there. And it's a um, great club. It's been super successful over its time, more recently in the last few years. So really excited for, for Nick and the Corfu Grammarians Football Club and what they can achieve in season 2022. So we'll be interviewing Nick and discussing his journey so far in the strength and conditioning industry. He's a exercise physiologist by trade and he's got a full-time job as an EP. So really looking forward to discussing how he balances his full-time job. He's also a father and, um, and how he finds the time to be able to work with the boys in the afternoon. If you want to listen to that live episode, all you need to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel by searching for Prepare Like a Pro, and you can send in your questions as well for Nick or myself via any of our socials through direct message or email. In terms of the podcast, on Tuesday we have the co-CEO and founder of Body Fit Training, Cameron Falloon. This episode is one that you definitely not want to miss, whether you're a business owner uh, you're a high performance manager, strength and conditioning coach, or you're an athlete looking for practical tips to take yourself to the next level. Cam shares and provides lots of them throughout this episode. Uh, it's super inspiring from coming from his own journey as an athlete uh, and having a severe back injury and then rehabilitating himself um, and then working in the AFL industry. He's worked three different AFL clubs and worked from uh, a strength and conditioning coach, rehabilitation, but also as, as a manager, as a high performance manager. He's worked over in England uh, and in the academy program with, for English Premier League. And he's also, of course, famously CEO of Body Fit Training and founded that business. So um, we discuss how he went about creating that business and how he transferred from elite sport to working in the private sector. So definitely don't want to miss that one. On Wednesday, our Get Better plan will be around stress and improving your mental game from an athlete's perspective, so coping strategies that you can implement to uh, things like mindfulness, meditation, and just trialling some different breathing um, methods and, and having awareness. Uh, Self-awareness is huge when it comes to this space, and I just provide a couple of tips and tricks that have worked for, for me as well as the athletes that I've worked with. Uh, and things I've long, um, learned along the way from psychologists, sports psychologists that I've worked with over my time. So definitely recommend uh, listening to that and even for the coaches as well. If you're interested in that topic, make sure to tune in. It's a short one and um, make sure I, prov I provide a lot of uh, informative information and some practical tips, hopefully, for you guys to improve your mental game. And then on Friday, talking about mental game, we have Matthew McGregor, who's a sports psychologist. I was lucky enough to work with Matt at the Portland Football Club. He's currently the AFL Players Association Sports Psych, as well as running his own company that's going to be working with community-based sporting teams in the upcoming 2022 year. So watch this space, but we discuss all things around how to deal with uh, adversity, um, what does resilience look like, and how you can develop your resilience from a mental point of view, um, and even if you're uh, coming from a, not from an athlete pursuit, but you just want to improve your coping strategies for life and performance in life, definitely recommend listening to this one. Um, Matt shares his experiences um, and hardship that he's gone through and how he's coped and the importance of sleep and looking after yourself uh, and exercise. Um, for being able to deal with challenging situations but also from a performance point of view how can you find a routine for the athletes out there that starts from recovery early in the week leads up into building your arousals that is specific to your game that's going to allow you to perform well and also transfer that throughout the game as well so not just focusing on preparation as the ball bounces on the for the start of the game but throughout the game as well so definitely recommend listening to matt's podcast he provides his fully and we go into great detail around some practical tips on how you can improve that area that's it for the uh, for next week's episodes we've got a new segment starting for 2022 which i'm super excited to announce where our newsletter and academy members so those on the online individual program we will we always catch up every Sunday at 5 p.m. And our newsletter members, so those subscribed on our newsletter, um, will have exclusive access to join us. And we, we catch up every Sunday at 5 p.m. where I present on a topic for about 15 minutes. Let's say it's like speed development. And I present through Zoom a couple of slides via PowerPoint. 
and then hang around for 15, 20 minutes and answering any questions for those on our program. So we want to get the newsletter um, members involved. Um, obviously, we share uh, exclusive access in terms of our, um, any uh, discounts that we have with our newsletter. We um, send through the show notes for the podcast, blog posts, and heaps of educational content, as well as some present recorded presentations. But we want to start engaging with you guys now from a live platform. So if you're not a, a member on the newsletter, it's completely free. All you need to do is go to preparelikeapro.com. And actually, for those that sign up, you get a free masterclass uh, fitness for masterclass presentation as well as a two-week free trial on our online program um, so all you need to do is head over to our website enter in your email address and you'll be away and i'll be starting that every month that will start on sunday the 9th of january okay let's head over to instagram now for our live q a Hello, Instagram, and thank you for tuning in to this week's Prepare Like a Live Chat Sunday show. Three questions to answer, but if you are tuned in and you have any questions, make sure to just hit the question button at the bottom of your screen, and I'll do my best to answer your question. So we'll start with uh, Charlie. He's sent through a question via email. Uh, his question is pretty simple. Tips for gaining mass. So for those that want to gain mass, in the gym, uh, a nice simple thing that you can start doing is slowing down your movements, particularly your accessory-based movements, so not your power-based exercises that you're doing early on in the program. If you're following a, a, a good periodized strength and conditioning program, you'll have your heavy lifts and your speed and power-based stuff at the start. Still attack that, focus on lifting heavy and lifting fast, but accessory uh, movements, so it might be things like bulk and split, Squats, chin ups, push ups, um, any single arm, single leg exercise, ice of curls, skull crushes, uh, dumbbell lateral raises for the shoulders, whatever it might be, or some ab work. Um, try and slow down the tempo. So, time under tension, where we're trying to increase your time under tension. So, slowing down the movement will increase your time under tension, will, which will elicit a hypertrophy uh, effect for the muscles. And then from there, by doing that with your training, we then want to make sure that we're fueling your training. So high uh, protein is really, really important. So making sure that you're getting regular protein uh, hours to 48 hours. Uh, and it's not all about uh, density, but it's actually spreading that protein consumption uh, after your digestive system and trying to have a protein every two to three hours. Uh, um, and then from there, yeah, the third aspect to like whole is making sure you're getting quality sleep. So you're falling to sleep within 30 minutes, you're not restless, you're getting a good eight hours of recovery, and you're doing that over a weekly basis. So that consistency is really important in terms of your sleep. Hopefully that helps if you need more detail around that, or any questions, or if you want to try out our program, we have a two-week trial where one of the um, programs we design is called Gainers for that exact reason. It's revolved around improving your strength, improving your power, but also for those footballers that need a game. Next question is from Bob. And for those tuned in live on Instagram, you feel free to send through your questions and any problems you're having with your strength and conditioning or any feel like you want to work on food, send them through and I'll do my best to answer them. Bob's uh, question is for his daughter. So tip for my daughter who wants to develop her balance. Your balance is, is probably undervalued uh, in a strength and conditioning for, for most athletes. They want to focus on and same as coaches, we want to make sure the athletes are getting more powerful, we're getting stronger, we're getting faster and all those sort of sexy things. But balance does allow us to keep our feet on the field. It can help with your skill acquisition, particularly with kicking um, your feet in the contest. Um, so making sure you're working on your balance is really important. And some great things that you can do would be some like barefoot training, so like any any um exercise that you're not for focusing on max force production like heavy squats or um any jumping plyometric based movements or, or of course or speed based running but for leg exercises um doing it with bare foot will strengthen your foot intrinsics which are really really important staples in the feet and i like to focus on creating an arch so for those that have flat or flexible feet um, really focus on your big that big toe to the ground that should create a strong arch for your foot 
And that's something we actually want to do with our strength-based movements as well as uh, improve our, our balance. So if you're doing a squat, a back squat, uh, focus on that big toe and that will help activate your um, which will in turn will help you use your so the body is, is connected all the way through, through from the ground up. So doing that will improve your balance, but it'll also improve your, your output in terms of your strength training. Simple drill that you can, um, that Bobby can start practicing is just standing on one foot with your eyes closed. We're just challenging your proprioceptors by switching off one of your senses, your eyes, uh, and that will help build awareness around your foot. Uh, and that's actually, although it looks simple, it's actually quite a challenging exercise for athletes to do. So that's barefoot. Close your eyes and just balance on your foot for maybe 30 seconds. If that's too hard, then break it down. Quality is key. So maybe up with 10 seconds each side, and you can do anywhere between 5 to 10 reps. Hopefully that helps, Bob. If you need more detail information, feel free to direct message us on our socials or send through an email. Question and last question is from Jeff. I'm having back issues from heavy lifting, mainly in squats and deadlifts in the gyms. Any advice? Uh, tricky one without seeing what you're doing or looking at your program, Jeff, but straight off the bat, in my experience, people have back issues from back squatting or, or deadlifts. Um, it sounds like it could be a bracing issue, so making sure that um, you're not actually sucking in your abs, but you're expanding out. I like to just imagine someone was going to punch in the guts as hard as they could. Typically, people brace quite well when, they have, when they're thinking of that. So focusing on bracing nice and strong, expanding your, your abdomen or you use your legs. Um, is really, really important. I, I like to call that earn the right to use your leg and focus on that leg drive by bracing your trunk. Uh, it can be uh, maybe, maybe your wrist is quite, you're not pulling down and activating your upper back. You're actually quite loose and relaxed. So activating that upper back can help with the squat or for the deadlifts, it's using the armpits together. So we're locking the shoulder in place and you're not getting um, movement through the shoulder. Uh, and then technique would be another one as well. So if you want to send through a video, I'm more than happy to give you a couple of tips, mate, and send it through to us via Instagram. Um, but yeah, technique in terms of your efficiencies. So what's the bar doing? Is it deviating off the lines? We want ideal bar going in relatively full plane, straight up and down, moving away from the body with the deadlift. So it's not on your shins and on your thighs. Then there's a chance that you could be using your lower back a lot more rather than your your strings and glutes uh, and same for the squat if the if the squat's deviating forward you, you're loading your toes a lot more around the weight being at the midfoot uh, so bar path can be key and then also what's your body doing uh, in terms of the movement and, and technique are you losing your posture um, what's your neck doing what's your head doing all that sort of thing so uh, technique's a massive one and one that you want to make sure that you're doing what i would recommend if you're having back issues would be to strip it right back Get assessed by a physio, one that you know or one that your friends recommend, uh, and have them to, to see if there's anything structurally going on. And then from there, just ease back, back into the gym. So slow it down and just change the exercises. So for a leg press or a hip thrust for a few weeks, get strong with those accessory movements and work on your bracing technique and then get back to those movements. And you just start really slow when you get back to your movements don't lift maximally on the, on those ones that are hurting your back. Just ease into it, and, and we call it the feel good uh, rep ranges and weight. The exercises that do feel good and, and comfortable for your body. Great questions, Charlie, Bob, and Jeff. Thanks for sending those through. If you have any questions in the podcasting world um, or those lifting in live, feel free to direct message us. We'll compile all the questions that we get for the week, and then every Sunday at six pm, we'll answer your questions. Next part of the podcast, we have our power tip. So the power tip and one of the biggest lessons that I learned during the pandemic and continually um, uh, learning or, or get friendly reminders from the pandemic, how uh, time can never be an excuse uh, for, for fitting something into your schedule. So for me, the last three personal training, um, not PT, but my, my training, doing doing and strength and weight training um, has had a massive drop off and also my reading a lot more of my education uh, through the practitioners um, either through the podcast or just on the phone or, or in person and then uh, researching through uh, YouTube podcasts and that sort of thing um, but there's a lot of different ways that you want to absorb information and reading is one of the best ways so I want to make sure I get in the 
habit of that, as well as um, get my training. So for me, I always thought the excuse was time. But in fact, uh, after going through the pandemic, where you get a amount of time when you get adjusting to a lockdown, time is clearly not an issue. I still found myself not fitting in in and prioritizing those so it's shifting habits and making sure that we're prioritizing the tasks that are important and a big part for me and something that i learned is making sure that i'm saying no to certain things to allow time for those for those things that are important um, so that's something i want to share and the power tip that i've found that works for me is just setting small tiny goals so for me it's just simply i want to make sure i move slash exercise four times a week and that i read 10 pages a day uh, and what indirectly has come from that is because they're achievable, they're sustainable. So I, I find that I'm, I'm actually doing more than that. I've been doing that, speaking to that for the last sort of weeks. I'm doing more than that in my training and I'm, and I'm definitely doing more than that with my reading. Um, but I'm not going to change those goals. I'm still going to stick to them. That's my limb. And what I find is that it's quite motivating because I'll, as soon as I start, I'll usually um, do go above and beyond in those activities. So that's something that I've found that's with me and I wanted to share with you and hopefully there's something that you're out of a routine or you're not in habit with. Eventually, once you've done it for about 12 weeks, it'll just become automatic. Uh, and that's the hardest part is changing a habit. Um, but yeah, biggest learning is that time can never be an excuse. So that's something I continually remember um, and that it all comes down to prioritising important for us. And a big part of that is filtering what to say yes to and, and what we need to say no to. Next part and last part of the podcast is to, for, for those footballers listening in, um, this is just some of the questions that I'll typically ask in my first uh, consultation with a remote coaching for those on the like a pro uh, individualised coaching program and we're not able to see them in the gym or on the field, we do Zoom coaching sessions and um, typically I'll ask around these 10 questions and a few others and I wanted to share that being our last uh, sorry, our first live chat for 2022 with you guys in the podcasting world. So these 10 questions are all revolved around and really, really important in knowing your why um, and therefore what actions do we need to do to get fitter, faster and stronger. If you don't know your why, then you'll have a drop off in consistency and it's, it's consistent that pays dividends. Uh, consistency is a lot more important in terms of long-term development than intensity. Um, although intensity has a place consistency is what's going to get us to where we need to go and really realize our potential so we'll list these off if you're listening in live or you're listening in the podcast world um answer these questions and and, and take the time um they'll definitely no doubt if you haven't asked questions before they'll get you thinking a little, a little bit differently in terms of your preparation and hopefully it will allow you to get some results for 2022 and then allow for this to be your best season yet. So first one, am I getting the results I want from my training? So that's a real simple one. And you can go one or two ways. If you're getting the results that you want from my training, then it's simply doing what you're doing. If you're not, then you need to make a change. Otherwise, you're just going to keep getting the same results. The next part of that, which is on the same sort of path, is what results do you want? And for those that are on the individualized package, my follow-up question for that would be, if you joined our individualized coaching package, what would be the number one thing you would want in three months' time? So is it to improve your max speed, your acceleration ability, your lifting technique in the gym, your body composition, putting on more muscle or dropping body fat? What is the one thing that uh, in three months' time that you, you want to achieve. And then around that is we can think about too many things and get distracted that we want all these things and you end up not doing anything. So really think about what is the number one thing you want to achieve and pouring your energy into that. Another element to that question, number three, is when I see other people get the results I want, what does it look like? That's a good visual task. So what does success look like? If it's improving your skills and you want to improve your kicking, write down really specifically in detail what that looks like. Think of someone that's doing that now. This part is around your support, which is really, really important for those that want to reach for performance. So who are my, number four, who are my biggest supporters that will stretch and support me towards my goal? So not only will they just pump you up all the time and 
say how good you are, but they'll challenge you and um, and and ask you questions um, and potentially challenging what you don't want to hear, but you, but they're doing it from a, a good place to be able to make you better. So noting those people down, both family, coaches, friends, support network is is massive. So we want to make sure that we're aware of those. Number five is how can you help? So noting down, we want to make sure what's important to us. We want to make sure we're being grateful and showing our appreciation. And part of that is supporting them. So we think of some ways that you can give back to those. So for some, it's going to be your parents. It's going to be your coach. It's going to be your ideas, thinking of ways that you can support them. Number six, what are those who are getting the results doing different to self? So thinking of that person that was getting the results that you want and you want to achieve this year, what are they doing differently to you? Are they working hard? Are they more consistent? Are they you know trying to work out? And if you're not sure, speak to that person. Because success leaves clues. Number seven, are you intrinsically or extrinsically extrinsically motivated for your results? So simply, do these results, are you passionate about it? Have they come from in you know internally? Have they come from yourself? Or are you doing them motivated to please someone else, like a parent, a coach, a friend? Um, are you motivated for financial? reward so is it coming from a place about coming from a place that you love or is it coming from a place to be able to please or or serve us number eight are you enjoying your football really really important question and it's important for all ages particularly youth but it's all about fun you should be enjoying your football it's about playing and enjoying the game with your mates but also for adults as well. That's a really, really, really important one. And if the answer is no, this is something that you need to prioritise. More important than anything else. How hard you're working in the gym, on the field, with your skills. If you're not enjoying the game, you're potentially leading to to out, which is which potentially you could put yourself at risk of, of or um, or just simply not putting your best foot forward. And if, it, if the answer is no, think of the time when you last did. When did you really enjoy the game? We want to try and tap back into that. What were you doing differently to enjoy the game? Who were you playing with? What was the environment? What was your approach? And maybe down at your road, were you taking football too seriously? We need a strip bit to enjoy the game again. Number nine, do you know the difference between good and bad pain? So this is around self-awareness, body awareness, um, really, really important skill for a footballer to have because it is a competitive season and we're demanding the body in, in every athletic pursuit, jumping higher, sprinting faster, aerobic capacity, strength, size, power. So the body's being stretched in every direction. We want to make sure that we have a good awareness around knowing when to pull back and, and when we can pu push forward to be able to improve your capacity. So knowing that is really, really important. Number 10 and last one, are you consistently sticking to your routine? And are you prioritizing your intensity in the key areas? So not getting distracted. Number one, focus on your routine, what works well for you and, and allows you to perform well on a weekly basis. And are, are you prioritizing, are you using your intensity ticket to call it in the right area? So if you know that your footwork and your speed is really, really important for your game, make sure that you're putting intensity to that, to top that weapon. Don't waste it on another part of your game that maybe you're not going to get the best return for effort. If you want help on these 10 areas, feel free to message us. Uh, if you have any questions or queries, reach out. More than happy to help out. And like I mentioned earlier, for those that want to ask me live questions on the uh, Zoom platform for an exclusive access, once a month our sub newsletter members will be able to join myself and the Academy members. Uh, and all you need to do is subscribe to our news newsletter, which is at propellerpro.com. Jordan Love, best looking S and C, you know, mate. It's not an aesthetic thing. It's all about knowledge. Um, that's this episode, guys. And if you have any questions or queries, make sure to shoot them through. 
Really looking forward to our new segment, the webinar, which will be starting on uh, January 9th at 5 p.m. I'll send out the Zoom link 48 hours before via email to our members as well as the newsletters. And let's make sure that 2022 is your best season yet and answer those questions. Take your time. Don't rush through them. If you have any questions, queries, make sure to reach out and I'll see you guys on the next episode.